In this video, I'm going to be talking about a few copyright considerations for small business owners who are dealing with copyright that they don't exactly own. I'm Isaro, the founder and principal attorney here at The Carter Firm, a place for small business owners, entertainers, especially those entertainers who have come to realize that they are small business owners and all who create come to understand their contracts and protect their intellectual property. If you own a business or make even the smallest living off of the things that you make, keep watching. I'm gonna be talking about copyright disclaimers, fair use, and the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, that is the DMCA, as all are things that you should be considering when you're developing and posting content for your business. So before we get into the rest of the video, I have two disclaimers. This is strictly about United States copyright law. I live in the US, I practice in the US. I'm not talking about anything other than what I actually practice and read about all day. By watching this video, you acknowledge that I am an attorney, but I am not your attorney, okay? No attorney client relationship is being created. Okay, this is not legal advice. If you want specific legal advice for me and for your copyright strategy, there's a completely separate process for getting that done. All of my links are in the description below. Do you post content online that's not yours? And by content, I mean music, art, photography, film, and writing, things like that. Like when you're marketing on Instagram or even here on YouTube, do you review music, music videos, TV shows, the visual arts as your online business? Do you do commissions of already copyrighted works? Yeah, well, I'm gonna get into why that may not always be in your best interest. If you're reposting content that isn't yours anywhere online, right? You can be liable for copyright infringement. That thing that y'all like to put on your videos and you're posts saying, oh, no copyright intended or no copyright infringement intended. You're not doing anything except basically admitting that you're infringing someone else's copyright. Also, linking or crediting the original owner of the work can still land you in some hot water on copyright infringement. You're only in the clear when you have permission to reuse the work or repost the work and feature it in your videos or the other content that you put online. I know a lot of you already know about fair use and that that's a thing that can allow you to use the work of another without their permission and without holding you liable for copyright infringement. Yes, it exists, of course, like, yes. But, and especially as a small business owner, it's not often that your for-profit use is going to be considered a fair use, okay? Even if it were considered that, you would likely have to go through the whole entire legal process and have a court decide whether or not your use was actually a fair use. It can take months and years to get that done. And from a business standpoint, how many of you have thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars to beat those kinds of infringement charges? And I mean, that's only if the US has your uh, jurisdiction over your case. Other countries have other laws about copyright and how they enforce them. If you're technically infringing in another country, you're subject to their laws too. I don't recommend going into court and arguing fair use on your own. It really should only be argued by someone who is familiar with the different for, uh, fair use factors. There are four of them and they're weighed differently on a case by case basis. And you really have to be deeply entrenched in the law to make like a sound argument. You should rely on somebody who's trained to know what they're doing. Because if it's decided that your use wasn't a fair use, all you have left in the sentence is, I infringed, right? I infringed, but it's a fair use. I infringed, okay? That said, it's really only likely that you'll get to court after dealing with the way that the platform that you're using handles copyright infringement issues, either through their compliance procedures with the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, the DMCA, or through their own copyright policies. Before we move forward, I want to remind you that this video is about copyright for small business owners. When you're in business um, and you're up against these things, nobody cares about your feelings. They care about the control that they have over their copyrights and that's it. It doesn't matter how you've used their copyrights. It matters that you've used them without their prior clearance. And before you say, but just know that they don't care. 
They don't care. And you can bring your butt, okay, to court and see them there. They don't care. I'm sorry. Like, that's just the way it is. Now, the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act of 1998. Yes. Maybe some of you watching were born after 1998. I cannot say that myself. Um, congratulations to you. <laughs> around 1998 was the time um, where the internet was starting to explode and there was like a boom of people infringing copyrights on different websites at the time. So Congress decided to pass the DMCA to protect hosting sites from liability for infringement and to allow copyright owners to inform infringers that they've been caught and that their infringing works are coming down. That has since evolved to include the websites and platforms that we see now on web two. I'm really interested in seeing how this issue of copyright infringement is gonna be addressed in web three especially considering all of the imperfections that we see currently in web 2. The part that's most relevant to you as someone who posts content online for your business and it may not exactly be yours is that evasion of liability for the service providers to so the online web hosts. That's the safe harbor regime and it offers immunity to claims of copyright infringement if online service providers promptly remove or block access to the infringing materials after copyright holders give appropriate notice. So that, that safe harbor regime is really what's getting people's content taken down. A lot of these platforms can be very overzealous making sure that they'll be able to take advantage of the DMCA safe harbor regime. So that's why you'll see people like Totally Not Mark and you know, any other person who's experienced like someone like with YouTube's content ID, right? Content ID is their way of being able to comply with the DMCA and to make sure that they can take advantage of the DMCA safe harbor. From a business perspective for them, there are millions of users of YouTube every single day, millions of creators. They're putting up billions of hours of content a year. There's no way that a couple of people are going to be able to review all of that and be able to rightly assess whether or not there is copyright infringement in any of these videos, right? So that's why they have the copyright owners identify their copyrighted works and they have their algorithm that goes through through every single piece of content automatically on their platform because imagine there was a bunch of infringers and every single time something went down because of actual copyright infringement that wasn't fair use is taken to court and YouTube is a named defendant in those copyright um, infringement proceedings. How much money do you think they're gonna have to spend on lawyers? Okay, a lot. And in the cases where copyright infringement is found to have happened, how much do you think they're gonna have to pay out in punitive damages? A lot based on the millions and millions of users, like, come on, you can see why they have this like automated system. That's why you see all of this content being taken down. They don't wanna have to deal with it at all. And I, they put the onus on you, like you, the content creators get the short end of the stick, <sighs> which sucks. <laughs> So it's gonna be that or the platform's policy on users posting content that isn't their original work. Have you read the terms of service here for YouTube, for Instagram, Twitter, anywhere else that you post content for your business? Maybe be surprised to what you've agreed to. And I get it, to be seen and stay relevant with any social platform's algorithm, you have to post often and you may want to cut a corner or two here and there by posting the work of another to your Pinterest or your Instagram or your YouTube, right? Where you incorporate it into your video. You don't use all of it, but you use a good chunk of it, right? I urge you to not if you can avoid it, especially not make your living, okay? Especially here on YouTube off of the copyrighted works and materials of others. Your whole livelihood can be ripped out from under you overnight. I mean, you don't even have to ask, right? Just search totally not Mark and you'll see all the crap that's going on with him. And it sucks because he talks about his whole empire that he's created, how so many people are depending on him and how long it's going to take for him to even resolve these things, right? For him to even say, okay, he can post these things back up. Like it's insane. I urge you to really do your due diligence about fair use and understand how it works and how legal minds interpret it. 
the lawyers and judges here are the ones that are running the show and understanding what fair use is and really looks like for people like us is going to help because a conversation on fair use can take a very long time in the description bar below i've included a link to a site that explains it very well and can be very helpful to you as a business owner when you're posting videos online but even beyond videos take these principles and apply it to your situation because the subject matter still applies and it can really help you when you're developing your content strategy to keep that in mind. In the event that you do get sued by a copyright uh, infringer, it would be great to have liability insurance for your business. Um, I know I do. <laughs> I know most of you already have that too. So good job on, on that. And possibly talk to a lawyer about your intellectual property strategy for your business, even if it's dealing with other people's IP and not your own. In fact, I'd urge you to talk about both, okay? Like not one or the other, actually both. I do sessions with business owners on this kind of stuff all the time. It can really help. Sometimes you'll be safe if you have a small following online, but I know for a lot of people, the point of being in business is to scale your business and grow and to have as many eyes on your business and as many customers coming through the door as possible. Once you reach that level, I promise you, people are gonna be coming out of the woodwork, okay? To not only request that your posts come down, but to sue you too. So having a solid strategy from beforehand will help save you a lot of time, a lot of heartache, a lot of anxiety, and a lot of money on the back end. That's all I have for you today. Um, if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to the Carter for Media. Just click the subscribe button below or up at the top, wherever it is on your computer, just click it. You having fun. Also, if you wanna know when the next video goes up, hit the notification bell and you'll be amongst the first to know. Now, I wanna turn it over to you. Did you learn something new from this video? Is there another IP topic you'd like to see a video on? Are you gonna check out the fair use link? You should. <laughs> and have you considered talking to a lawyer about your business's IP strategy? Why or why not? Let me know the answers to all of those questions in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it helped and I'll see you in the next one.